This is the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin, a.k.a. Q Gauze No Days Off. From on the field and off the field, NFL player and entrepreneur. Motivating you to be the best you can be and getting you out of your comfort zone. Sharing with you travel, sports, and entrepreneurial tips with amazing guests on the show. Now, get ready for your life to change with the Life Journey Podcast and your host, Quentin Gauz. What's up, everybody? How's it going? This is Quentin Gauz of the Life Journey Podcast. Hey, folks, and we have a great guest on today. Um, this guest has been uh, he, he, a graduate of Clark University, um, has been on multiple, worked at multiple magazines. Um, this man has three podcasts <laughs> is, and is constantly growing and has some great content. Uh, Jason Fiber, how's it going, buddy? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. So I know it was uh, super random. I reached out on LinkedIn. Yep. <laughs> I was like, hopefully I can get this guy on the podcast. And uh, now I appreciate you being on. It's a, it's a, it's an honor. Oh, hey, no, my pleasure. I, I, I appreciate it. I, uh, you know, it's crazy. It's, is time is tight. Usually now it feels especially crazy because you know we're all locked at home. If you got kids, I do. I have two of them. But um, but I try to you know I try to be mindful that um, you know there's there's always new and unexpected opportunities to get in front of people to connect with them to you know get 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 a message out there. So uh, when I can, sometimes folks come out of absolutely nowhere like you did on LinkedIn, and I, I try to I try to say yes if I can. And so uh, I just felt felt like uh, felt like it was a good a good one to say yes to. No, I appreciate that, and, and that's true. Man. When you reach out to random folks or people come out to you, you never know what can happen from it. You never yeah. know that, that networking. So, mm -hmm. awesome. That's right. It's so, really it's always worth reaching out. So so true. So let the folks know a little bit about like yourself and your start with within like getting into magazines and uh, just your whole start overall. Yeah, sure. So right, I mean, I'm I'm I mean, the end you know the end point here right now is that I'm I'm some of the editor in chief of Entrepreneur Magazine. I host a bunch of podcasts, um, do a lot of speaking, uh, have a novel out that's being developed into a TV show right now, and um, and uh, you know another book that I'm starting to develop. And uh, it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. But where did I start? Well, you know, so you mentioned um, Clark University. I appreciate that. So that's right. You know, I went to Clark University, a small liberal arts school in central Massachusetts, and I did not know exactly what it was that I wanted to do. But I just knew that I had a skill and that skill was writing. And I knew that I was a curious guy and that when I got in front of people, uh, things happened. And that ended up leading me to journalism, and I didn't have any connections. I did a couple internships, but they weren't they weren't fancy internships. They were, you know, they they were um, like small local newspaper internships. So that's where I got my job. I got my first job at a tiny newspaper called uh, the Gardner News in North Central Massachusetts, doing nothing, like covering nothing. There was nothing going on there, but I had to write <laughs> I had to write two stories a day. And you know, the big first revelation that I had in my career which has really served me very well throughout was after about a year of working at that little paper, the Gardner news, I realized, you know, I have these dreams. They were kind of abstract at the time. But they were these mm -hmm. dreams of writing for these large publications and connecting with these big audiences. And let's just use the New York times. Let's imagine I wanted to work for the New York times. Nobody at the New York times, zero people at the New York times, were picking up my little newspaper and reading my silly story about the local diner and saying like, we got to hire that guy. And we got we to reach out to that guy and get him <laughs> over here. Like that was never going to happen. And so I needed to go to them. I couldn't sit mm. around and just do the thing that I was doing and expect that somebody would notice. No, I got to go to them. Mm. So I quit after nine months. Uh, I quit after, I quit after about a year. And then I spent nine months sitting in my bedroom in a small town called Holden, Massachusetts, Next, li I literally lived right next to the graveyard, and I was just pitching. I was just cold pitching, just coming mm. up with ideas, cold pitching, and um, got a lot of no's, got a lot more people just ignoring me, but got a couple of people who were willing to hear me out, and then I would hustle, and I would prove to them that I could, I could work at their level, and that's how I started getting stories in the Washington Post and the Boston Globe and the Associated wow. Press and um, and that was that was the beginning of me proving to the rest of this industry that I could work at their level and I've basically wow. followed that model ever since that's real talk right there you know what like I like what you said about you you know you, you took that time to sit where you, where you quit you quit a job that you like you know what I, I gotta get out of this I gotta yeah. focus on what I really want to do nine right. months 
to really get your mind right and then pit, you know pitching cold you know cold emails calls whatever it yeah. was that's and and, yeah. and let's be clear 9 months was not the point at which i made it 9 months was just the point at which i felt like i had a somewhat different plan and yes. also that i realized that my current plan was unsustainable and so mm. it needed to be mixed with something else so so after you know i mean i just listed off all those places that i wrote for and that was really cool but like you know we're talking about a lot of work to get an article into the Washington Post that was going to pay me, I mean, I don't remember, but it was couldn't have been more than $500, right? Like that's not paying that many bills. So um, so once I got a sense of how I could start to succeed that way, I took another newspaper job, another unsatisfying but larger newspaper job in the same area. And now I did both at the same time because now I had a steady paycheck coming in which was helpful. It also just gave my life some structure. So I wasn't sitting around all day, but I also continued to freelance because now I knew I could do both. I could, I could go out and I could work this job and I could mm -hmm. make some money and I could, I could, you know, develop my resume in whatever way that was. But at the same time, I also had this other avenue. So I was also able to start building myself out further ahead and starting to make these connections that I didn't know when they were going to pay off. Right. It's not like you write for the Washington post once and they say, come on down. Right. Like they don't do that. Right? They, just pay, <laughs> right, right. they just pay you $500 and they move along. So I had to do both at the same time. And I did that for many years and, and that ended up leading me, uh, eventually kind of hustled my way into a job at Boston magazine. And then that's how I broke into magazines. Wow. That's an amazing story. I mean, the the hustle behind you. I mean, like what you got? You got a hush. You got those three podcasts: Hush Money. Yeah. Uh, the pre, the was a pessimist archive, and then Power yep. Softers. Like that's right, man. That the just the hustle behind yourself, man. From what you're telling me, that that grind is so important. Like as an athlete myself, and then like being, a, I wanted to be a journalist, broadcast sports broadcaster. And oh yeah. Didn't end up going that route. Got into marketing, but like the hustle like just regardless of it like you you grinding towards your goal you grinding and like achieving what you want to go and get it's a continue it's just consistency every day and one thing That's is right. a, a atomic habits i don't know if you read it with james claire no um atomic habits talks about that that consistency every single day mm -hmm. so it sounds like you're a guy that's like once i'm on track like i'm just gonna go get it like it's gonna pay off at some point <laughs> yeah I, I need to know what the plan is you know i need to know what the plan is and and i think for most people they go out and they get that job, that first right. job, and they figure the plan is I'm going to do really well at this job and I'm going to see where that leads me. And mm -hmm. I I just I just really quickly realized that wasn't the plan. Mm -hmm. Like that's not the plan. If you get a, to me and listen, you know, this is this is just the way that I've followed. I've built my own career. Um, there's a million other ways to do it. But to me, I think that if you get a job and you only focus on what that job expects of you, then the only thing that you ever become qualified to do is the job you already have. Mm. And that's, I'm not interested in that. So <laughs> I Love was it. really focused on what else can I learn? How else can I grow? What other connections can I make? How can I constantly challenge myself? Not in like small incremental ways, but in large leap ways. And once you figure out that that works for you, then that just becomes the plan. Then you just keep doing it. And that's what I've been doing. I mean, I'm, st I'm still doing that now. I mean, I have, I have what people, you know, and, and people have called and I'm, I agree with them. It's like uh, just one of the coolest jobs, which is a editor in chief of entrepreneur magazine of a, I, I run and I'm the face of a large national brand, um, that, uh, that's respected by entrepreneurs, but you know what? That's not the end point. I mean, first of all, I don't own the brand. It's somebody else owns the brand. I, I just have right. I just have like the best job at the brand, but it's not my brand. So um, I can't sit around and think, well, I've got this forever and all I got to do is be good at this because what mm. happens if it ends? It'll end mm. at some point. I don't know when, hopefully not tomorrow, but at some point. So I got to start thinking, what's the plan? And the plan is the same plan that I've always had, which is to do a really good job at my job, but also be very mindful of what the other opportunities are that are available to me and work my next job at the same time as I'm working my current job. Well, that's powerful right there, what you said, like not being comfortable in your position regardless. Like you, you got to keep going hard, keep showing folks like I, I run this position. This is, you know, this, I won't let you know why I'm here and why I have it. But at yeah. the same time, you're still like, I'm still thinking ahead. I'm not comfortable. Right. That's, I like that mindset, man. 
I like that. Yeah, mindset. never. I never. I've never. I gotta tell you, I've never celebrated like anything. Uh, mm. Which maybe maybe I'm depriving myself, right? <laughs> but like, I didn't, right? Like, I remember I got this job, editor in chief, and and uh, and like my wife or some people were like, we gotta go out and celebrate, and I was like, there's nothing to celebrate, right? Like now I gotta do this job, and then I gotta figure out what this job is for, and then I gotta figure out where I'm going next. Like, what am I mm. celebrating exactly? I haven't gotten anywhere. Uh, and, uh, and that's, you know, you do that enough and it just, it just sinks in. That's just, yeah. that's just the mode that you're in. And I, that's the mode I like. I don't like relaxing. I don't like saying that I, that I accomplish things. I mean, it could drive me crazy because, you know, I've got this, got this, you know, I, I feel, I guess I've accomplished a bunch, but I don't feel like it. And, um, and I feel, you know, I often feel like I'm looking at other people who are doing things that I'd like to be doing and uh, right like you know i don't i haven't written i haven't written the like international best-selling book yet where's that i gotta do that yeah, right? right like what well, like i can't be proud just like having this cool job at this magazine i haven't written the international best-selling book yet so i'm just always thinking that way and it keeps me on my toes and it makes me focus on what i think the bigger picture is wow that's powerful what now let me ask you this like if yeah. you what's what is like the end goal for you, what would I what don't know? What, what does that look like? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can tell you some of the elements of it. Um, I mean, some of the elements of it are that I feel like I fully own it, right? That I like that everything that I'm producing, I own a hundred percent of, or at least a controlling share of. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and that I feel like people know me for me, mm -hmm. uh, all right? So that they don't, uh, that it's not, you know, you, you don't. You don't think of Tim Ferriss as Tim Ferriss of something. He's just Tim Ferriss, right? right. And uh, and right now I am editor in chief of Jason Pfeiffer, editor in chief of Entrepreneur Magazine. That's how most people know me. That's fine. That's cool. That's that's my job. That's what I do every single day. But um, but you know, ownership means that people associate you for you. Right. And so I'm very interested in that. And that's why I speak a lot. And uh, you know, I'll say yes to podcasts, and you know, I want people to 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 hear me, to develop right. a relationship with me, um, because you know, once you have that, once you have your own audience, and people know what it is that you have to offer them, which which by the way doesn't come out of nothing, right? As you develop an audience, you better understand what your value is. The bigger exactly. your audience, the greater the pressure is to really understand what you're able to deliver to people, and that's a good right. process to go through because it forces you to really zone in on that. And so that's where I want to, you know, that's, that's, that's what I like to do. Um, and w what exact form will that take? I don't know. You know, I don't know. It could take a million different forms. I, I try right. to, I try to play every angle of it, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll take the calls about the TV development stuff and I'll make the podcasts and I'll talk to my book agent and we'll, we'll, we'll see what hits. We'll see what hits, but I know, you know, but it all goes back to the plan that I had originally. And the plan right. is always be developing other things always be looking at how your skills can build on top of each other that's real talk right there folks that are listening from around the world this like take that in please like please take that in what he just said though he's dropping gems right now because <laughs> you're you can't if you're constantly building yourself up and learning all the time even when you're to age 100 whatever however you however old you live to yeah constantly keep learning that's super important to know folks so no, thanks for you know saying that. So yeah, let's dive into your podcast. You have three podcasts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, let's start with uh, Hush Money. Sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, so I'll tell you the reason I have three podcasts. There are too many podcasts. I, I don't suggest <laughs> three podcasts. That's too many. Um, it's too many. The reason it's like that is because uh, each one has a serves a kind of different purpose, um, and, it, and it really goes to show you how once you start to develop something and start to pursue new skills, that, that it opens up new opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I started with Pessimist's Archive. That was number one. And Pessimist Archive, it's a show about why people resist new things. It takes a historical look at it. So what I want to understand is why do we keep saying the same things over and over again throughout time right why why is what the, the things that people say about how damaging social media is to you and how it makes you lonely or what all that stuff has been repeated over and over again about stuff that today we think of as totally fine so everything that people say about social media people said about novels about mm. about 
like reading novels. They also said it about listening to the radio. Do you think that reading novels and listening to the radio is damaging? I don't. I don't think anybody else does. So why do we think social media is? It's the same thing. And I wanted to understand why that's happening and why we keep resisting change, even though we repeat ourselves over and over again. So that was something that I was just really interested in. In 2016, I launched this podcast. I had to teach myself how to podcast. I didn't know anything. I didn't know a microphone. I didn't know how to talk into a podcast. Um, and uh, and it took, took a bunch of trial and error. The first episode took three months to make. And I got it out there and we started to build an audience and it was a lot of fun. And it taught me how to podcast. And then a little while later, I'm an entrepreneur and the, the you know, CEO of the company wants to get the company into podcasts, which I was very excited about. And so we're looking around, Who's who, who knows how to do this? I know how to do this. I know how to do it because I'm already <laughs> doing it, right? right so right. here, let's, I'll launch the first one and then we'll have something and we'll have a product and we can build on top of it. So I launched, a, I launched Problem Solvers, a show about entrepreneurs solving problems in their business. And, uh, and so that goes along for a few years. And then one day I'm at an event and I'm, I'm speaking at this event uh, and and um, and uh, this woman named Nicole Lappin, who I had you know, known a little bit, uh, a best-selling finance author, was emceeing the event. And we were chatting backstage and we were having a lot of fun. And then I went out for my thing and there were like a whole bunch of things that went wrong on stage. And I, I've gotten really good. I love when things go wrong. When things go wrong, it's awesome because it gives you an opportunity to show how good you are when right. things go wrong, right? Like right. I've gotten really good at being funny and fast on stage when things go wrong. And um, and I think that that lodged into Nicole's head that I'm really, I'm good on the fly. And um, as it so happens, she had been talking to a bunch of people about launching a podcast and she didn't really know what it was going to be. And she was thinking about this idea and she was thinking about me and she texted me a few weeks later and she said, Hey, do you want to do a podcast called Hutch Money? Where it would be the kind of, he said, she said about money. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, I don't have time for this at all, but the reason I said yes was because I know that Nicole is excellent at brand building. She's done such a good job mm -hmm. with her personal brand. She has lots of TV connections. She's had a couple TV shows. She knows what she's doing. And I thought what a opportunity to further build that relationship and see where that goes. Like, let's go develop some IP, so some intellectual property. Let's go, let's go create this show. Let's see where it leads us. And you know, that's been great. We've made two seasons of the show and now, you know, Nicole's looped me in with all her TV people and we're having all these really interesting conversations and who knows where it'll go. But to me, it was an opportunity that just was not worth passing up, even though I, I will make the time for it. I don't know how, but wow. I'm going to, and you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Where like the whole this whole thing started with me just thinking like, well, I might as well get buy a fifty dollar mic and see if I can figure it out. And that taught me a skill that I'm mm -hmm. still discovering where it's going to take me. Powerful, powerful. Still discovering it, but like you're really, really good at it. <laughs> I gotta say, yeah, thanks. You're really good thanks. at it, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, no, you know, I'll... it's like you want to you want to live in the present and the future at the same time, right? Like, be really good at the thing you're doing now, but like, be aware of what it's going to build for you tomorrow. Exactly. True stuff. So we're getting close to the end of the podcast. Got two minutes left here. Yeah. Can you leave the folks with uh, a quote? I always leave a quote, um, leave some type of quote that can, they can uh -huh. take with for the rest of their lives. Sure. So, oh man, I got a bunch of them. Um, the, the one that I, uh, it's not really a quote so much as it's two words. So there's a guy, his name is Reed Hoffman. He's the co-founder of LinkedIn. He's now an investor. And he, a uh, very smart guy, uh, he has this phrase that I absolutely love, and it's called permanent beta. And permanent beta means that we should always think of ourselves as a product that is in beta. You know, what's a product that's in beta? Mm -hmm. It's a product that's still getting feedback, that's still being tested, still being updated, not exactly ready for prime time, but it's still out there anyway. People are, people are experiencing it. That's us. Right. We should never be finished products. We should never think of ourselves as something that that, uh, you know, is finished and you put on a shelf. If we live in a state of permanent beta, it means that we're always improving. We're always updating and we're always very aware that this is the state that we have to be in. And I find that a really powerful way of thinking about it, of taking something that's, you know, a tech term and really applying it to ourselves because we are all products, functionally speaking. And, right. uh, and those products should, you know, those products should always be in beta. So that's, uh, I, you know, the we put we put Reed on the cover of the magazine many years ago, and I assigned 
I signed you know the story out to a writer in San Francisco to go spend some time with them. And then I was reading the first draft of that story in my office and I came across that thing, permanent beta. And I literally stopped what I, I was like editing this story. I stopped what I was doing. I wrote permanent beta on a piece of paper and I hung it on my wall and it's still there. Mm. Wow. That's a, that's an interesting one. I never heard of that. That's, that's very interesting. Thanks for that. I'm definitely yeah. going to like keep that within my mind as well too. And folks that are listening, like always stay in beta, always keep developing yourself. That's mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. like that. I love Thanks. that. That's all good yeah. stuff. Um, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Uh, just want to say, like, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. Um, oh, Ryan, thank you. Um, everybody, when you get a chance, go listen to Problem Solvers podcast. Go listen to the Pessimist Archive and Hush Money on Apple on all the <laughs> on all everything. Anyone you <laughs> want, <laughs> everyone you want. You know, and uh, anything else you want to leave the folks with before we get off? No, well, I, I'll just say, you know, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, please do uh, Instagram and LinkedIn are my are kind of my my most active channels um, at Hey Pfeiffer on Instagram and you know just my name on LinkedIn and and I, I make it a point to um, to to at least respond uh, to everybody. So uh, so you know if you reach out if you got a question, uh, you know I I, I I can't I can't promise I'm going to come on everyone's podcast, but I I will at least respond. I promise that. Jason, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we can have you back on with the next season. <laughs> hey, sounds good. It sounds good. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening to the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin Gauze. To find out more and to follow the journey, visit Quentin's Instagram at QGauze or our business page at iron underscore visuals. For full recaps of the show, find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Thank you for tuning in.